Hey everybody, welcome to Free Range Art Farm. My name is Thomas. Uh, so today is Sunday, May, I think 15th. Uh, it's about one o'clock in the afternoon, probably 80-ish degrees. And I'm going to take this swarm trap down and put them in the apiary. Uh, I'm out here in my super secret location, which is really just the back edge of my property. Uh, this has been a pretty good trap. Last year I caught two swarms in it uh, and I took it down, I just didn't put it up again. I probably would have caught more. Uh, this year we just caught the one, and I'm gonna take the trap down and leave it because I've got a full enough apiary. Um, but it's kind of, this is an open field beyond, in front of me, that you can't see. So this is down a tree line, it's in a little bit. Uh, there's a water source just beyond it, a little creek. So, seems to be a decent, a decent location to catch bees. Um, anyway, uh, on with, uh, with removing the trap. I'm gonna go ahead and um, put my jacket on. I mean, I closed off the entrance this morning uh, before dawn, um, but just in case if I drop it or, or anything like that, I'm gonna go ahead and get my protective gear on and uh, we'll go ahead and take it down and I'll put that on super fast speed. So stand by. All right, here we go, wish me luck. All right, well that was pretty uneventful, but what I'm gonna do next, let me swing you around, is I'm gonna go ahead and take the ratchet strap and strap this lid down uh, for the drive back, because I don't want this, if this falls over, I want the lid to stay on. So we'll do that next. It's all strapped down, it's in the cart, ready, uh, ready for the drive to the apiary. There were a couple of girls that were out front. I don't know if they got out somewhere, um, but they were buzzing around. They were not super happy that I'm moving them, so I'm glad I put all my protective gear on just to be safe because I don't want to be stung. All right, I will see you guys at the apiary. All right, so we're in the apiary now, and uh, quite frankly, I didn't plan on having this many beehives this year, so I've got to try and figure out where I want to keep them. So let me swing you guys around. All right, so this is the swarm that we just installed last week, last Sunday. That's my uh, the girl I'm mentoring. It's her colony. Then I've got these. A couple of splits I did. One that overwintered. And I kind of have this tree in the way. I was thinking about putting, putting them there, but there's not a lot of room to work. And on this side, there's I could put them here facing out that direction. Um, but there's also not a lot of room to work there. These are all kind of the south-facing ones, but in the end it doesn't really matter. These are the flow hives. They're a little far apart. I could probably end up putting something in the middle here. But uh, then we get into this tree here, have a little space there. But I think in the end, now that I've swung you guys all the way around, I'm gonna put them right here. So I've got the swarm we caught last week, and I'll put the new ones here. They'll pretty much be facing almost straight north, but that's okay. Um, so, all right, so I think that's where I'm gonna end up uh, putting them is just right there behind me. Uh, so I, uh, I, <laughs> I have to build a hive stand at some point because I think I have another swarm back in the middle part of my property in the forest there. Uh, so I gotta confirm that. And if I do in fact have another swarm, I'm gonna go ahead and build another hive stand that'll hold at least two uh, boxes on it. Kind of like what I did on, on the other side here and uh, put that up and then we'll have the two of them kind of facing out this way. Uh, I'm gonna eventually actually expand this yard out, out more uh, so I just have more space. But in the short term, they're gonna go there. So I've got everything in place here. We've got my, uh, the hive they're gonna go into. We've got the swarm here. What I'm gonna do is this is the opening on this side and the opening is over here. Since they came from my, my property not even 100 yards away, I've got this, um, it's part of an evergreen. I'm just gonna put it over here to sort of block the entrance a bit. And then that should help everybody to reorient. Um, I think I'm actually gonna move this to the other side of the box and start working from there. And uh, we'll see how it goes. 
Go ahead and take a couple of these frames out. Have a little room. All right. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna put this over here. And uh, actually, let's put these in. What I want to do is have the frames that are in this strap be uh, pretty much in the middle of this this hive. And then they'll build outward. All right, let's see what we've got. Let's uh, angle you down. There we go. Ooh, these are some uh, aggressive little bees. Now these girls have been cooped up. They've been cooped up for a couple hours, and it's warm. They may be a little bit grumpy about that. All right, so let's just start. All right. This is a completely empty frame. So I'm going to go ahead and just put that in the middle. All right. They're building a little bit of comb. Now normally swarms, they talk about how swarms are just wax building machines. And I was giving that some thought. You know, we talk about Oh, this is a heavier frame. There's some nectar in here. I'd like to see some eggs. Evidence of a queen. Because this is kind of a middle frame. Oh wow, there's brood in here already. How long did I leave these girls out here? Oh, we definitely got a queen. Uh, so back to my story. They talk about how swarms are uh, wax building machines. And I was thinking about that. And we always talk about how do they decide when a colony swarms, you know, they make a new queen, how do they decide which bees go with the queen? And it would make sense to me that, you know, they bring some nurse bees, they bring some foragers, but the bulk of the girls that go with them would be wax making age. I didn't spot my queen. But we know we have one. So that's between 12 and 18 days old are the girls that make wax. So I'm thinking that that's kind of how they decide. They're like, all right, so this is all wax that they made in the past week. And they're filling that. They've already got capped honey in here. Holy cow, girls. I need to be careful angling this because it's not attached at the bottom yet. So we'll go ahead and put this down. Now that I'm looking at this, I need to move these girls over. Get them more in the middle here. There we go. Put this here, put that there. So I'm thinking, back to my story, that uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You know what, I have an extra frame. Let me put one with wax foundation in it. There we go. I'm thinking that uh, they fly with the bulk of wax builders. So between 12 and 18 days of age. Like I said, they probably need to bring some nurse bees and a few others. But, uh, I'm thinking that's how they decide. All right, so I'm going to reach across you here. Oh. So I did not see the queen, but I'm not super concerned because we saw a ton of eggs and larvae, capped brood. They're making honey. They got a lot of nectar stores, so these girls are doing well. I'm going to go ahead and strap them in. I try to strap in all of my colonies. Partially, you know, if bears come by, etc. But uh, also, for example, tomorrow we're supposed to get some really heavy thunderstorms and even a possibility of uh, tornadic activity. Even though we're here in Northern Virginia, we still have a chance of tornadoes. 
So, I'm going to strap these down. These girls are strapped to the pallet underneath. And then, uh, and then this whole thing is strapped down. So if this does fly away, or flip over or whatever, it should at least somewhat remain intact. Well, and there you have it, guys. Uh, that's pretty simple, moving, moving a colony, or excuse me, a swarm from a trap into their next home. Pretty straightforward. Not too much to concern about. Like I said, the only thing you want to worry about is uh, them reorienting here if you move them fairly close. You have to move them at least three miles before they will reorient and not go back to the original location. So I'm trying to minimize how many foragers we lose, which is why I closed them off before sunrise this morning so the foragers weren't out. And uh, I move them, block off the entrance a little bit with some pine, and uh, I think the theory behind that, I don't know if this has been proven or not, but in the wild, the bees usually live up in a tree somewhere, say 20, 30, 40 feet high. And if there's a storm and that tree falls, a lot of times where their entrance is will end up being covered by brush and debris. So whenever they have a covered entrance that's covered by brush, they'll go, ah, oh, crap, something happened. We're not way up in the tree anymore. We're down on the ground or somewhere. We're not sure where we are. So let's do, uh, do our reorientation flights so we can make it back. That's the theory. I don't know if anybody's ever proven that or not. Um, I also like my theory about how they decide which half of the colony goes. I think the bulk of the girls that leave with a swarm are 12 to 18 days of age. Now, older bees, the foragers, can produce wax, but those wax glands, they close up a little bit after they're about 18 or 19 days old, so they don't as easily produce wax. That's my theory. Hit me up in the comments below if you think it's, uh, it's based on any anything. You think I'm just blowing smoke? Uh, feel free to let me know how stupid I am. I always love those comments. Uh, but anyway, thanks for tuning in, guys. Be well, be good, be safe, be happy, be true to yourself. And as always, I don't know if you can hear them. They're buzzing all around me. Be mindful of the bees. We need them. Have a good one, guys. We'll see you next time.